talked about switching up cognitive processes. Are there certain movies that seem to do that throughout the two hour span that you're really going from one emotion to the next back and forth? Sure, there are lots of movies that fast forward your emotions. Um, most of your uh, Jack Reacher kind of, uh, you know, solve the crime, stay out of danger are moving at a very quick pace. Those movies tend not to involve much uh, humor or much regret. Those movies tend to be based on fear and anticipation, so they keep kind of a higher heart rate going while you're watching. The movies that are more uh, psychological or involve the aspect of uh, reflection, thinking about your memories. So I'm gonna, uh, 500 Days or 50 First Dates, those kinds of movies that uh, display people portray people that have lost memory or are not forming memories properly are very engaging, real successful in the box office, uh, more engaging for an audience who may not be, you know, a hero or a daredevil or that kind of a person, maybe can watch those but have a lingering appreciation for someone whose mind is not working exactly the way theirs is. So lots of movies come at different cognitive processes and in forming a story around not working cognitive processes, some kind of brain injury that has changed that person, you get a lot of fascination from the viewer's perspective because everybody relates to forgetting at some time or another, everybody's had a forgetful experience. What is it like to not be able to form a memory so that you live in a forgotten state? Those are some interesting psychological brain processes that have been presented and done well in the theaters. One of the aspects that we point out in science of screenwriting is how skilled uh, screenwriters build in the contrast of emotions. So there's been uh, some studies done and researchers have used eye trackers in um, audiences such that they can tell where the audience's eyes are focused on the screen during which kinds of movies. And because we can measure things like how long the eyes stay on the character and how often the eyes move off the character, we can translate those eye movements into attentional factors. And we now understand that timing is critical. So a viewer can take about three minutes of tension of that kind of uh, bond fighting with the shark or whatever that is. And then there needs to be a break or the eyes are gonna saccade. You can't take too much tension, so we need a relief. So if you'll notice in the Bond movies, it's really brief. It's about a minute and a half where it's death, murder, kill kind of, you know, tension. And then there's a segue, whether that means that there's a, a further away shot, a long distance shot, or a scan to the boat that's coming to the rescue, or whatever interruption in order to give the nerves, the, the brain processes that are building tension in that watcher, a break. And it, it has to be at least, a, you know, a, a 30, 60, 90 second break, so the scan away before you can re-engage in a tight emotional situation. So we know those processes are happening in daily life and that when people go to a movie, they an anticipate experiencing deeper tension, more dramatic exchanges. But in order to maintain their attention, you still have to give those 
interactive breaks so that there's a release and then a re-engagement in the tension and conflict.